Klaus Smiley. Welcome to Night Flight. Hello. Hi, Andy. Andy, how are World you? Hi, thank you. <laughs> Worldwide Live, a new live album. What made you come out with the live disc at a time when really no band is doing that? That's true. And some people are saying, this is not the time for a live album, but we're saying this is the perfect time, the best time, because rock and roll is happening live on stage. So that's why we think a live album is the real thing, 85. And uh, we wanted to document our most successful tour we did last year all over the world. And I think it features Scorpions really at its best because this band is a live band and you really get a lot of energy and power on this album. And I hope that the fans will like it the same as we do. It must be a very, very difficult chore, though, to find the right tracks to put on. I think, Rudolf, you once told me you had to wade through many, many versions of particular songs. Yeah, we had many, many tapes. We did uh, recording in L.A., in Costa Mesa, San Diego, New York. We did also uh, Paris, Brussels, London, and Stuttgart, Hanover, Hamburg, Cologne. And there was many tapes, you know. And after we finished our tour uh, in 85, in February, we had to listen to all the tapes. And um, Pretty tough job. Yeah, pretty <laughs> tough. But Boring. we did our, our list, uh, each one in his home. And we came then together in a studio and found out that we nearly agree except one song. And we, uh, what our plan was to, put, uh, to take the best songs from each concert and put them together, that we have the highlights of the whole world tour. And I think we did a right mood, move. What was the one song you didn't agree on? <sighs> and why? <laughs> I think it was Bad Boys Running Wild. Uh -huh. There was uh, two different opinions. But we, in a studio, <coughs> it's much easier to find out which one better is because you have much better uh, different equipment. Different sound, better sound, yes. sound. I mean, most of the tracks on the album are taken from California. Mm -hmm. And there's one song which is from Paris and one from Cologne, West Germany. So, but we, we were not looking for perfection. I mean, this is a live album. It's not important that every note is played really in time and stuff. I mean, there are songs like Dynamite. We really play double as fast on uh, the studio version, you know. It's but it doesn't matter, I think. It's, we were looking for the best live atmosphere. And with the shows in California, I mean, it's, it's like a hell breaking loose, you know. When we were, were listening to the audience track, and it was unbelievable. It's not only when before the song starts or end of the song, they are screaming like hell all through the song, and we had to bring them down on the record a little bit. But they're still... Uh, very important part and you can hear them all the time really screaming they're really into it and it creates a, a great atmosphere it's really like when you have a party that's a record have a good time and i think uh, the uh, songs most songs are coming much better uh, over than uh, on our studio version a uh, live album because you can feel the energy of the audience we got from yeah there are some bands around people go to their concerts and go wow this band sounds much better on the record you know, on their records, but with us the other way around, fortunately. Well, one of the things <laughs> that kill live records in the and 70s... It's, it's really, it's really hard live. Well, the Scorpions have always been very much alive, man. I mean, the song Coming Home, most people would think about is going home to your... It's <laughs> actually about going back on the road, isn't it? Going home right. in front of your TV set. You know? No, it's not. It's, it's, it's our philosophy. It's uh, going home on, on the road, going home on stage, because that's the place where rock and roll is happening, live. And that's why, why we're thinking, uh, this is the right time for a live album. And uh, we had a live album a few years ago in 78, which was Tokyo Tapes. It was the last thing we did with our old guitarist, Ulrich Horst, together. It was like the end of chapter one, you know. And now, so a lot has changed in between. It was Tokyo Tapes, now it's worldwide live. And well, what has changed in the band since then? A lot of different situations. Well, we had a, we had until uh, Tokyo tapes with Uli Ross we had different kind of styles, Uli Ross style like Jimi Hendrix influenced and Klaus and my style more Scorpions direction, <coughs> and now with Matthias Japs we had a perfect guitar player, he uh, uh, liked <coughs> to play the Scorpion style, and that's the point. On our old records we have had two different styles that people must listen to it from Hendrix to Scorpions all the time and now. From Love Drive on, we have one style, Scorpions, and that's much, much better for the band. How do the, the audience? All the songs on the live album are taken from the last 
albums from uh, Love Drive, Animal Magnetism, and Blackout and Love at First Thing. It is amazing that you do nothing from the first half of the band's career on stage anymore. Is well, it, why is that? I mean, people ask me sometimes, oh, why can't you play uh, Catch a Train or some songs? Well, but we played for such a long time, and really when uh, Matthias joined Scorpions in 79, and we really came very close together, and the music direction became really very strong in one, one direction. And so there was no, no point to play the old stuff anymore, because we had played them for such a long time, and there were so many uh, good new songs. And so, I mean, uh, <laughs> if we're thinking about, then we, if we would play new songs, or all new songs and old songs, we would have to play, instead of 90 minutes, uh, maybe four hours or something, right. you know. I mean, but we're thinking about maybe in the future, it's maybe a good idea uh, to pick some of the old songs and bring it together, a kind of medley or something like this, where, you know, all this... Maybe a good idea. I think the fans think would appreciate it. But I think we yeah. can be happy that we have such so many good uh, new songs, you know, because some bands they must play all the time the old songs because they don't have any new right. songs. I think uh, our turn is much better. Yeah, is it I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah they, <laughs> they save the best songs for the encore, and then if I know they are uh, 10 years <laughs> ago, they were, uh, they were new, you know. So we have pretty uh, good material, wide range of to to choose songs, you know, from so many albums, and I think uh, next year when we come back for another tour, for another world tour, when we come back to America, I hope, well, I think I know that we have, uh, we'll have many new songs by then, and so some old stuff. Well, this live album gives you almost really two then. years to work on a new studio album. Your last one, Love at First Sting, sold millions of copies around the world. Do you, do you use this live album as kind of an opportunity to take a break from recording and get a little perspective on your career, maybe begin stage three of the Scorpions? Does this live album sig signal the end of stage two? Uh, no, the idea was really with this live album just to give our fans something extra. It's, this live album is for our fans who who seen the show last year, and when you listen to the whole thing, all the memory, everything comes back, and for the fans who hasn't been there, it's a good start to get into Scorpions and what Scorpion sounds like live. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just, we did it because it was, uh, we wanted to document Scorpions 84, 85. And uh, when we come back now, when we go back from America to Europe, then we start writing on new material, new songs. And uh, there will be a new studio album coming out next year. And we don't want to play too many shows this year. We have many offers, of course, from America and from Europe. And I mean, this tour finished in February, a few months ago. And so far, we had no break. Remember, this tour started in January 84, has taken us all over the world, all over Europe, America, Japan, and even Brazil. We did in Rock and Rio in January. And uh, so there was no break so far, because when we came back, we uh, we worked on the on the mix for the live album, and we were working on the film, which will be out very soon, a documentary. It's a whole thing. So this is kind of package: as a live album and a film, a, do a documentary of the world tour, and we wanted to catch the feeling and the atmosphere of the whole thing. It's not uh, the band uh, on stage only. It gives also a view and a look behind the scene. So Obviously it's a lot of scenes from all over the world, take from all over the world, and like a, a, a look backstage. You were saying before how uh, in Rocky Like a Hurricane you were in a cage surrounded by a hundred beautiful women or whatever it was. The Scorpions have caught some heat over the years for being sexist because oh, the album oh. cover is going back to Virgin Killers and other ones. How do you react to that now? Has that died down at all or is it still there? <clears throat> I mean, we like it very much, the <laughs> girls, you know, and we try to uh, uh, rock Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, you know, that's a basic idea. No, no drugs, but sex <laughs> and rock and roll, yeah. And for us, it's good to have some special uh, kind of covers where girls are 
also in. Yeah, we're not into drugs at all, you know. I think the best drug is the music. A live show and the music and when you go out on stage and when you have a great concert with the kids together and you know a gr good vibration and we tr we try to give our our fans a very positive positive energy, positive vibrations. There are so many bad vibrations in the world anyway. So we really try to cheer them up, having a good time together. But uh, the sex thing, I mean, sex is very close to rock and roll. The whole thing when you go out on stage is pure sex. It's really, it really is. It, when you go out on stage, it's really like making love to the audience. It's really something you, you know, you're getting higher and higher and higher together, you know, until until the top. It's really, it's really something very special. So sex and and, and rock and roll, uh, it's it's kind of natural thing. So it's kind of natural that's in our covers. Yeah.